Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're exploring the always look mysterious phenomenon in transmission line. The Ferranti effect. As we know that electricity is generated with power plants, using big generators, by converting mechanical energy to electrical energy. This electrical energy is then transmitted over a long transmission line to consumers. To safeguard both people and equipment, power transmission lines rely on various safety devices and components. These measures not only protect connected loads and personnel, but also optimize the efficiency of the transmission system. The transmission line faces various kinds of losses and phenomena that affect its efficiency. One of such phenomena that greatly affects the transmission line is Ferranti effect. Before I proceed, please friends, if you're new here, please support my YouTube channel by subscribing and hitting the notification bell for future videos. <coughs> Typically, voltage decreases along transmission lines due to losses, with the sending end voltage being higher than the receiving end. However, the Ferranti effect defies this expectation causing the receiving end voltage to rise above the sending end voltage. This unusual phenomenon occurs under specific conditions, leading to a surprising reversal of the expected voltage drop. This brought us to the topic of today. In this video, we will explore the followings. 1. What is this Ferranti effect? 2. What causes this Ferranti effect? 3. How to reduce Ferranti effect. Lastly, advantages and disadvantages of Ferranti effects. Friends, stay tuned as we start. Welcome back. Before diving into today's topic, I recommend you to check my video on transmission line properties to gain a better understanding of capacitance inductance and their relation with today's topic through the link in the description box below now let's get started what exactly is the ferranti effect the ferranti effect is a phenomenon in which the voltage at the receiving end is greater than sending end voltage of a transmission line during light load or no load conditions the rise in voltage is due to more reactive power being generated by the line capacitance in transmission lines than the power being consumed by loads. Note that Ferranti effect doesn't occur in short transmission lines, it is only occur in medium and long lines. For those new to this concept, here's a simple terms explanation. Sending end voltage means the voltage at the power generating plant or source of power while receiving end voltage means the voltage at the point of consumption such as homes shops schools hospitals and industries let's continue the ferranti effect was discovered by british electrical engineer named sebastian ziani de ferranti in 1890 it is mainly occurs in the presence of a huge charging current, due to the capacitance of the transmission line. Although different factors affect the current in the transmission line, however, Ferranti effect occurs due to the following three reasons. 1. Transmission line capacitance. A long transmission line has significant capacitance and inductance along its length. The Ferranti effect occurs when the current drawn by the line's capacitance is greater than the load current at the receiving end, especially during light or no load conditions. The large charging current of capacitor causes a voltage drop across the line inductor, which is in phase with the sending end voltage. This voltage drop increases along the line, making the receiving end voltage higher than the sending end voltage. This is known as the Ferranti effect. 2. Connected load. The Ferranti effect also depends on the load connected at the receiving end. The load can be in either three conditions. No load, light load, 
and full load conditions. First, under no load condition. When there is no load on the transmission line, only charging current flows. This current is drawn by the shunt capacitors, generating reactive power. The resulting voltage drop across the inductor is in phase with the sending voltage, causing the receiving end voltage to increase. Now, under light load condition, with a light load connected, the load current is significantly lower than the charging current. The line capacitance causes the charging current to lead, producing reactive power that flows through the inductors. Since the load current is low, the reactive power generated by the capacitor exceeds the reactive power consumed by the inductors. The voltage drop across the inductors is nearly in phase with the source voltage, and directly proportional to the charging current. Since the charging current exceeds the load current, the conditions are ripe for the Ferranti effect to occur. Lastly, under full load condition, when a transmission line is under full load, the load current surpasses the capacitor's charging current. This leads to the series inductors consuming more reactive power than the capacitor generates, resulting in a negative net reactive power and a decrease in voltage at the receiving end. So, under full load conditions there is no Ferranti effect. 3. Supply frequency. The Ferranti effect is directly tied to the reactive power generated by the shunt capacitance in power lines, which requires a non-zero frequency. Since DC has zero frequency, it doesn't experience the Ferranti effect. In contrast, high-frequency transmission lines are more susceptible to this phenomenon due to increased reactive power generation. Now, how can we reduce this effect? Let's explore this. There are certain measures taken to minimize the Ferranti effect. 1. Shunt reactor. The Ferranti effect happens when excess reactive power is generated in a power system without sufficient loads to absorb it. To address this, shunt reactors can be installed in the transmission line to absorb the surplus reactive power. Typically, shunt reactors are placed at the load end, but their location varies depending on the transmission line length. For medium lines, they're installed at the receiving end, while long lines require periodic installation, or placement at the midpoint. Underground cables, with their high capacitance, need shunt reactors at shorter intervals, usually around 10 to 15 km. 2. Line length reduction. Reducing the length of the transmission line can decrease the Ferranti effect. 3. Voltage regulation. Implementing voltage regulation devices, such as tap changing transformers, can help maintain a stable voltage level. 4. Power factor correction. Improving the power factor of the system can reduce the Ferranti effect. 5. Line design optimization. Optimizing the design of the transmission line, such as using bundled conductors, or adjusting the line geometry can help minimize the Ferranti effect. 6. Compensating devices. Installing compensating devices, such as static VAR compensators, SVCs, or thyristor-controlled series capacitors, TCSCs, can help mitigate the Ferranti effect. As we have explored how to mitigate Ferranti effect, let dive into advantages of Ferranti effects. The Ferranti effect does not have many advantages but disadvantages. However, some of them are here. 1. Reduced copper losses. The copper loss is loss in the lines due to the current flowing through them. It appears in the form of heat. It depends on the amount of current flowing through the line. As the charging current is leading in nature and the inductive current is lagging. In no load, or light load conditions, the capacitive current is greater than the inductive current. Therefore the net load current phase is more inclined towards the capacitive current. Since the load current is decreased, 
the copper losses also decrease. 2. Power factor improvement. Power factor occurs due to the phase angle of the capacitive current and inductive current. As the capacitive current reduces the effect of the inductive current, therefore the net current is mostly composed of resistive current which improves the power factor. 3. Voltage regulation. The Ferranti effect can help regulate voltage levels in transmission lines, particularly during light load conditions. Now, let's quickly go through the disadvantages of Ferranti effects. The Ferranti effect has many disadvantages such as 1. Overvoltage. The Ferranti effect can cause overvoltage at the receiving end of a transmission line, potentially damaging equipment. 2. Insulation stress. The increased voltage can put additional stress on insulation, reducing the lifespan of equipment. 3. Equipment damage. Overvoltage can lead to equipment damage, particularly in transformers, capacitors, and other high-voltage devices. 4. System instability. The Ferranti effect can contribute to system instability, particularly during light or no load conditions. 5. Power quality issues. The voltage rise can lead to power quality issues, such as voltage fluctuations and harmonic distortion. 6. Increased risk of faults. The overvoltage condition can increase the risk of faults, particularly in systems with aging or worn out equipment. These disadvantages highlight the need to manage and mitigate the Ferranti effect in power transmission systems. Key points and conclusion. Here, basic points to note about Ferranti effect are 1. The Ferranti effect causes a rise in voltage, resulting in a negative voltage difference between the sending and receiving ends. 2. The effect is directly proportional to the square of both frequency and line length. 3. Increasing transmission line length and supply frequency amplify the Ferranti effect. 4. Short transmission lines and high voltage DC transmissions lines are not susceptible to the Ferranti effect. 5. The effect is most significant under no load or light load conditions. Lastly, the Ferranti effect occurs when the capacitor charging current exceeds the load current. That's a wrap for today's session. My dear friends, if you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Stay safe.